Whoa, what an awesome day today. A little bit inclement. As you can see, the mist is over the hills there and down the valley there too. Absolutely amazing though. That, by the way, folks, is Wigmore Castle. Pretty awesome place. Anyway, what are we going to do today? We're going to be talking about uh, getting from John O'Groats to Land's End, the planning of it, how you organise the maps, how you organise the campsites, everything else you need to know. And did you know it's two million steps from John O'Groats to Land's End? Yep, that's going to burn a fair few calories. Let's crack on. Okay, folks, so the first challenge or the first piece of the jigsaw in this polar expedition to the South Pole is going to be going from John O'Groats to Land's End. One, to increase the fitness, but two, to heighten my profile. So fingers crossed we can get some commercial sponsors on board as well. So what I want to do is let's set out some rules for what this challenge is going to be. Rule number one, the challenge has to take place starting at John O'Groats in Scotland going all the way down to Land's End in England in Penzance. Rule number two, this has to be undertaken on foot only. You can walk or I can run. Probably walking to be honest. Rule number three, I have to drag that tyre all the way. Rule number four, I have to camp all the way. I'm not allowed to use b and I'm not allowed to use hotels, I'm not even allowed to use friends' houses. It really is a case of I have to use my tent all the way. In Scotland, I'm allowed to use campsites and also wild camping because it's loud up there. In England, however, it's a little bit different. I have to use campsites because in Europe it's illegal to wild camp. That said, there's going to be a time when I turn up somewhere and I cannot get in the campsite. It's been closed, for example and I will then have to wild camp that evening but uh, they'll be on rare occasions but the simple fact is the rule is I have to camp rule number five I do not have any backup I'm not allowed any backup for this challenge I am not allowed to have a car following me helping me out I'm not allowed for anybody to book campsites none of that it's all down to myself I will however be opening up slots if people want to join me on some other days for the walking you're more than welcome to come along Keep me company if you wish, have a chat, have a laugh. Um, but as I say, this is done completely on my own with no backup. Those are the rules, folks. It's quite simple, really. Anyway, the next part of the video is going to be explaining how I sort the map out and all the campsites, uh, the shops, the chemists, things that I'm going to need along the way. Hope you enjoy this next part. Uh, it's a bit of a tutorial, lasts about five, six minutes, but. Uh, shows you exactly how to get a free map and therefore plan out your journey. In my case, John O'Groats to Land's End. So now I need to actually create a, a map of exactly where I'm going to go from John O'Groats to Land's End. Personally, I use Google Maps. It's free. It's pretty good. Um, and it's relatively simple to use once you know how. It takes a little bit of getting, to, getting used to. I'm going to show you in this video exactly how to do that as well. So first off, you go to My Google Maps. Very simply to go for, Google Maggle Maps, and then get started. Now I've actually already got one in here, but I'm going to create a brand new one. What this allows you to do is create a map, have it saved, embed it on your website, and also share it to other people. You can share it to the entire public, the entire world, or specific people. So it's a very good tool to use. You've got your general navigation on the left here and some icons up, up the top here. Now I'm going to just creating one from directions from John O'Groats. It's allowed me down here now. John O'Groats to Lands and Penzance. Now you'll notice it says driving. Clearly, I'm going to be walking from Lands End to John O'Groats, so therefore I could do walking. However, click walking, you see where it's moved to. I could click cycling, but oddly enough, you probably missed it. But at the top here, the map moved and the actual miles is a lot, lot longer. So I'm going to click walking. What that will mean is when I'm checking the map out as I'm going through it, I need to make sure that there aren't any steps in there and things over roads and things like that. I'm going to have to go through in that detail to make sure I don't mess up. Anyway, we started our map. Very, very simple. We've got our directions of exactly where we're going. Great stuff. Now, what do we need to do? Well, since I'm going to be camping all the way, I'm not going to know exactly which campsites I'm going to be using, all because 
I could be having a good day or a bad day. Now, what I need to do here is, for example, is start off in John O'Groats, have a look at where it's coming down. It's coming down the A9 as it happens, because I do actually know that, but I can go in further to see and see which town is probably going to be the first place I'm going to be stopping or at least stopping for food. Because when I'm camping, I'm not going to be carrying the food with me for very far. The idea being is that I'll know where a shop is before the campsite, so therefore I can buy what I need that evening before, camp up, do all the cooking, all everything I need to do, get the food together for tomorrow morning, for the next morning, for example, and then set off the next morning and do the same again. So what I really need to do here is put icons on here, show me where shops are, where campsites are, chemists are important as well, things that are important to me. Um, so it's really easy to do. Now, in here, it's got a layer. Now, layers simply means something else on the map. So I'm going to call this layer uh, campsites. And this is going to show me where campsites are. Now, the minor problem is with Google, it doesn't show you where campsites are. Not brilliant. However, I actually know there's one here because I use a website called ukcampsite.co.uk. This is a brilliant website. And it actually allows you to stick a sort of big circle around a certain area. I've done it past Wick and it will show you all the campsites in that area. As you can see here, you can use the map. It's really, really good interactive. So I put a big, big red circle around Wick and I can go in a little bit further and I can see there's a campsite here. Now, I don't know what this campsite is yet. So if I click on it, ah, icon for a tent is highlighted, which means it's a tent. It's got caravans, it's got motorhomes, it's got everything, showers. Now I'm just interested in one with tents. So therefore, I now know that Wick Highlands, which is what it's going to be called, it's actually called Wick Highlands, is a campsite in Wick. And I know from my map, I am going through Wick, as you can see. So it's pretty close because all campsites for me are going to have to be very close to the road. If I'm dragging this tyre, a campsite can't be a mile away from the road. If you think about dragging the tyre an extra mile at the end of the day, it's going to be absolute knackering, can't possibly be done. Anyway, so how do I actually add this campsite to the map now? Well, I know it's called Wick Campsite because I've just found one. Wick Campsite. Wick River Campsite. There we go. Bingo. It's there. Excellent. And this little icon here says Add to Map. So off I go. Add to Map. Brilliant. You've seen it now. It's added to the map. I can scroll out a little bit. It's not a million miles from my route. So brilliant. And I've got it in my campsites. Uh, which is the, uh, the layer within within Google Maps. Now, I want to hide that a little bit because it's just a little icon at the moment. I'm going to be adding other icons. So I want to amend this a little bit. Now, I'm going to edit it. So the style I'm going to change it to is, I'm, I don't mind keeping the color the same. I'm not too worried about that because I haven't got any colors at the moment. But I want to use some of these icons to explain what they are. Now, to be honest with you, there's no icons there of any use to me. So I'm going to look for more. I'll look for camp. Hey, presto, looks like a tent. Let's use that one. And all of a sudden, I've got Riverside Camping on the map. Let me scroll out, see what it looks like. Hey, presto, one, two, three. I've got a campsite on the map. So I already know there's one there. When I click on it, and this is going to be on, embedded on my website, and I'll show you how to do that. All of a sudden, I've got all the details I need, website, everything else, to give them a quick call when I'm actually traveling down the country. Because what I'm not going to do is book these campsites ahead of time. I'm literally going to be turning up to book them. Or if I desperately need one campsite because there isn't anything around it, then I'll have to ring them the night before to make sure I can get in there. So that's how you simply add a campsite. Now, I need to know, is there any shops close to that campsite? Because the first thing is important to me is campsites. Now, I want to know, are there any shops here? Now, as I'm scrolling into Google, strangely enough, there's a Tesco superstore here. Brilliant. I can get everything I need the night before. And therefore, I'm not going to be walking very far. So in exactly the same way, now I need to add a layer because I've got campsites here and I've got directions. I'm going to add a layer to this. I'm going to call it shops. As you can see, it's just here. Tap on it. Tap on it. Nope, it's not allowing me to edit it. OK, fair enough. Very up. Oh, there we go. I thought it must do shops. Save. And all I need to do is click on this again. Add to maps. Tesco Superstore. I'm going to change it to a different icon this time. Uh, let's have a food icon. I'm going to change the color so it's distinctively in a different color. So very quickly, I've now got a shop and a campsite close together. Works pretty well, as you can see. So I now know that I can stop at the shop on the way through to the campsite the night before. Now I'm going to go over to my map, which is the one I've actually got myself and saved. 
so you can start to see exactly how this works. I've now done 120, 130 miles worth of walking down through all this area and gone through each individual, not walking through, that sounds wrong, uh, going through on the computer, going through, putting all the shops in there. I've also, as you can see here, got chemists in here. This is the symbol for chemists, all the campsites I need. And I've done about 120 miles so far. It's quite a laborious process, but it works very well. It gives me the flexibility to go to different campsites and different shops as I require them. I'm not going to use all these campsites. What I am going to do when I'm walking is be able to say, OK, I've got a good day today. Uh, let's try and crack on to the next campsite because I know it's only X number of miles away because I can see this map. It really, really is that simple. You can actually put this map on your website at any point and it will automatically update as you update it as I'm doing with my map at the moment. Now, there's one way to actually embed this in your website. I'm going to show you what happens when you try to do it the first time. You click on the little dots, you go straight to Edbed My Website, and it says this map is not public. Hmm, okay. So how on earth do you make it public? What you actually do is go to this little share button here, and you click, anyone with the link can view it, and you click share on Drive, and hey presto, it's now shared. Once you do that and go back into it, which I'll show on my other one, you can then embed it straight in to your website. So I can do embed into website, and hey presto, it's there. So you take this code, you copy it and you embed it into your own website. Really easy to do. Once you've done that, you'll actually get it something similar to this. Now I've got, this is my website, dominantrenshaw.com. Um, and in the expeditions, John O'Groats Land's End, which is where I am now, you can actually see that uh, there's a map here and this shows exactly where I am. People can expand this so they can see it better. Once they're in there, they can actually go in further and see exactly what's going on. Really, really easy to see. This is updated automatically as I increase the amount of um, campsites, shops, etc. on there. You'll notice, though, there are two weirdly black dots on there. You think, what on earth are they? To be honest with you, what I've actually had to do here, because Google Maps doesn't work 100% perfectly, Google Maps had me walking down the A49 across a very serious roundabout, which has got slip roads, as we can see, on and off. It had it me walking straight down here originally. Now, I'm not going to be able to walk past slip roads. It's very dangerous not a good idea so what i've actually just done is highlighted on the maps that um the black dots say take a different route as it is the blue line itself would take me a completely different route i don't mind walking down the a9 and coming off the slip road and then walking across but i don't want to cross that junction which you had me originally so i had to move it around a little bit because google maps isn't perfect um i've just had to highlight that in my own words so when i click on it it says google maps wrong come off a9 that's all I need to know, so therefore I know to do it correctly. But it's as simple as that, folks. It really is as simple as that. Google Maps is really, really good, as I say, and it sits on your website uh, really nice, shows everybody what's going on, and in the evenings I'll put an icon where I actually am on there as well. So hopefully that's helpful, and uh, it's giving you something, a free way of uh, getting a map for yourself on Google Maps if you're travelling anywhere and want to highlight some different ways. So let's bring to conclusion part one of organising John Great's to Land's End. Uh, we've managed to set out all the rules, what I'm allowed to do, that is basically camping and walking uh, with the tyre. Um, second to that, we've managed to now plan the route, as you can see on the map. Um, and I've actually taken the route right the way down about 150 miles from Land's End now, um, including all the campsites, uh, all the shops where I can get food and drink, and obviously the chemists if I need it in an emergency. So a lot has been organised there. Uh, the next thing is that it's been very noticeable that uh, organising campsites in Scotland has been relatively simple. Um, however, organising it in England has been uh, very, very hard, I'm not going to lie. In England, um, a lot of campsites now do not accept tents, which is very, very poor, uh, but sadly that's the way it is. Um, so it is a lot more difficult to organise it. I've noticed it's going to be a few very big days um, in England and we get from one campsite to the next, so the only ones I can go to. Uh, a bit unfortunate of that, but hey, we're going to crack on and we're going to do this. So next week, what do you expect next week? Well, next week we're going to go through two things. We're going to go through kit and the press. So the press, for example, I need to organise uh, to get the TV, radio, internet, press, you name it, on board. So I'm going to do all that next week, showing you how I do it. Um, kit, 
there's a lot of different kits to take here but obviously i need to take as little as possible because of the weight and um, what i'm going to try and do is get some free kit from some of these big companies to test the kit for them, like tents and uh, some of the some of the really good trainers that i'm going to need and things like that let's see what uh, we can get uh, for free by testing this for them as well so looking forward to next week uh, thank you very much for watching guys and girls I hope you enjoyed it I really hope you're enjoying this uh, live story of exactly how I'm going to get to the poll and uh, I will catch up with you all next week thanks for watching